Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and I have an interesting head-to-head -to, -head to do for you right now. Um, I don't know yet how this is going to go, but I think this is a comparison worth making. And I've put some things up against this knife before. This is the Koenig Arius. This is my favorite knife in my collection. It has been for a long time. I rave about this knife every chance I get. I've talked about it on my podcast with numerous guests. I talk to friends about it all the time, not in video. In videos, I compare things to it a lot because to me, it is one of those knives that, in my opinion, is just kind of the pinnacle of current USA-made knives. I think this is the best knife, dollar for dollar, ounce for ounce. It's just, I love it. I love, love, love this knife. Um, the last knife that I think I compared this against was the Microtech Sigil which didn't win, the Arius won, but the Microtech Sigil was a very well-made knife, and I, I thought it deserved to be compared, and in a way, I think that illustrated how nice the Sigil was. Um, but now I have this. This is the CKF, or Custom Knife Factory, Rotten Designs Evolution 2.0, so the CKF Evo 2.0, and this knife, has wowed me. <laughs> um, if you watch my review of it, you'll see that it is very, very positive. There's very little that I dislike about this knife. There's hardly anything that I would change if I could wave a magic wand. It is an excellent, excellent knife. And uh, it happens to be similar enough in size and build that I think it's worth doing this comparison. And I know that it's going to take some points. <laughs> um, I'm intrigued to see where this one ends up. If you asked me which of these right now would I get rid of if I could only keep one, I had to get rid of one, I'd still keep the Arius because I, I just have more of a connection with this knife at this point, but I don't want to get rid of either. And I think that's an emotional response, right? Because I feel such a bond with this knife and this one in particular, because it's been mine for a while and I've got memories and experiences with it. But man, this is good. So we're going to do uh, my typical kind of head-to-head -head comparison style where we're going to go across seven different categories. I have them written down in front of me so that I make sure I don't forget any of them because I know I would otherwise. So this is one of those rare cases where I have not even notes. I just literally have a list of my criteria. So the seven categories are looks, action, ergos, fit and finish, value, carry, and cutting. We're going to go across all seven of those things. And by the end of it, we will have a winner. Um, in the rare case that there's a tie, they'll each get a point in a category. I'm going to try really, really hard to not do that. I don't like it when categories get tied. I think it's better to just pick a winner, even if it's minute, the difference or, or the advantage to one. We're going to pick a winner. So, yes, <laughs> this doesn't necessarily mean at the end of it that the one that wins these points is my personal favorite, although it may very well be. We shall see. I'm just going to go through the process and we'll see what happens. And uh, some of these absolutely could be based on my opinion, especially the first one being looks. If you disagree with that, it may sway the entire competition. Totally fine. I'm just going through the way I think about these things as the objects that they are and uh, with my experiences that I've had with them. So this is my comparison. Deal with it. All right, let's start with looks. So first, the Arius talked about this knife a ton. I love the way this knife looks. I think it looks fantastic. I have frankly always loved the way this knife looks. From the first time that I saw a photo of it on Instagram, I wanted one. I think it looks really cool. I think it has gorgeous lines that flow and it's just, it's nice to look at, absolutely. But the Evo, I think honestly to me, I was looking at these side by side for a few minutes before filming <laughs> and uh, just kind of weighing them hand in hand, feeling the action to make sure that it was fresh in my mind. Um, looking at them side by side, I honestly think I do give a slight edge to the Evo in the aesthetics department. I think it looks a little bit better. Not by a mile. <laughs> it's close. But man, this knife just looks exciting. 
uh, this blade shape, the way that belt satin features that hollow grind. Why can't I? There we go. Get the light to shine on that. Um, it's just, it's a beautiful knife. And it also looks aggressive in a fun way. Uh, this is kind of like a, a macho representation of a knife, I think, in a lot of ways. It's less sleek than the Arius, for sure. The Arius maybe looks just more refined. But I think, for me, the Evo is going to be the winner on looks. So, one point for the Evo. Now, let's talk action. Um, the Evo has one of my favorite knife actions in my entire collection. It is awesome to middle finger flip. It has a hole for deployment, and that's it. So, it's excellent, excellent, excellent for it. And uh, it makes crazy good sounds when you do it. You can also use that hole to thumb flick. You can, of course, also use these external blade stops here for a thumb flick, so that works too, but 99% of the time that I open this knife, it's a middle finger flick, and it's great for it. This detent is a little soft. If this was a flipper, I can say with some level of confidence I would not like this detent, but as middle finger flicking goes, it works really, really well. That said, the detent on the Arius is incredible. This is a Gen 4 Arius. This detent and lock bar are phenomenal. My Gen 3 was not as good as this one. This is great. We have a hole for deployment and we have a flipper tab. Both of them work incredibly well. This knife is also drop shutty, although it's less um, like free folly than is that a word free folly? <laughs> it free falls less than the Evo does. It's not quite as just like gravity takes over immediately, but it's still falling 100% of the way, and it just feels a little bit more controlled. So the detent is awesome for the flipper, closing it is awesome that way, and then the fact that I can middle finger flick it, and that detent is just, it's so good for it. Um, I love having multiple deployment methods. I love when both of them are fun, and I love that it closes this way. It's it's different than other types of drop shutty in a, in a nice way. To me, it feels a little bit more refined because it is still free falling. It's still dropping all the way, but it has like this smooth resistance the whole way, not enough to slow it to a stop, but just to make it seem controlled, if that makes sense. I love the action on this. So action is gonna go to the Arius, but both are phenomenal, of course. Oh, one thing that I didn't even write down, and I usually do before I start, is talk price on the two <laughs> objects. Um, I'll come back to that when I get to value. That'll make sense. So remind me. You can't do that. You're watching this way after I film it. <laughs> anyway, um, next category is ergos. So ergos on these knives. Um, let's start with the Evo. The Evo has great ergos. <laughs> I really, really like it. If you want to hear me talk about it pretty long form, you can watch the full review. But basically, I spend most of my time choked up to here, next finger lands in here, the other two go here, and it is quite comfortable. The one knock I have on it ergonomically is that this jimping, for me, is too aggressive. I'd rather have no jimping than this jimping. I don't really like that there. But it doesn't ruin it. I still love the way this knife feels ergonomically in hand. Even choked back and not using that forward choil, still quite comfortable. This is a good size handle for me. It works quite well, and I like it. But this is one of my favorite knives ergonomically, period, ever. I love the Ergos on the Arius. This knife, I've described it before as feeling, to me, kind of like the sensation of grabbing a hunk of Play-Doh or clay and squeezing it, and then it like molds to the shape of your hand and that's what you're holding on to. This feels a lot like that to me. Everything is smooth, everything is rounded in an intelligent way. This kind of double finger groove up here really pulls the knife into me. And then you've got this nice kind of, uh, not quite a flat back here, but it's like this bulge up this way and back here so it swells into your palm and, and gives you a lot to grip onto. But everything is smooth. It's excellent in a saber grip, hammer grip, um, even in a reverse grip, very, very good. It's just this knife to me, especially with this thumb ramp with no jimping on it, it it's virtually unbeatable. So ergos are gonna go to the areas. There you go. Um, fit and finish. 
Another interesting one. So let's start with the CKF again. Um, as CKF knives go, this is my favorite that I've ever felt. Um, not just like the ergos and the blade grind and the way it looks and all that, but also just the way it seems to be put together. This one feels better than other CKFs that I've handled. And CKF generally makes very nice knives, but the way this one is done, it just, it feels really, really nice to me. Um, I haven't had any issues with centering or blade play or anything like that. Everything has remained solid and locked up and nice on it. And the finishing on the titanium is gorgeous. You've got this kind of like wood grain, like brushed texture in the titanium. And then it appears to be like kind of dark, darkened just a little bit, not super dark, but a little bit bronzy maybe. Um, it's not just raw titanium. You have that same texture, not only on the clip, but also on the flats of the blade. It gets that same directional texture going through. The grinds are incredible, not just to look at, but to use. Everything is even. Um, it's dialed. Lockup is great. It's a very, very good fit and finish on this knife. Um, but, <laughs> again, there's, there's your butt. Um, there's your butt. This, to me, is a pinnacle knife in terms of the way that it's built, put together, all of it. The way that the Arius comes together, to me, is next level. Um, maybe it's a part of it is the way that that action feels, the way that it drops with that smooth resistance. Maybe it's the way that the detent feels a little bit more crisp. Maybe it's just the way that these scales are like chamfered and contoured. Um, I don't know. They're, they're both exceptionally well-built knives, but to me, when I pick them up next to each other, the Arius feels more expensive. Um, the fit and finish seems to be just one notch above. Not a, not a mile ahead of it, but a notch above. Um, so, point for the USA. Great job. Um, fit and finish is going to go to the Arius. Next category is value. Thanks for reminding me. I'm going to come back to the, the cost of these types. So I typically write this down and I check um, beforehand. I dropped the ball on that. So I'm going to go off of memory and I think that I'm, I'll at least be close here. So this knife, the Evo 2.0, I believe in this version, this is the most plain Jane version that you could get. When they dropped, they were $590, I believe. I want to say that's exactly what they cost. I might be slightly off on that, but I'm pretty confident on that number. So just under $600 for this version of the knife. Now, if you're getting one on the secondary right now, it might be more than that because secondary can be crazy. To be fair, secondary on both of these knives can be crazy. So let's leave that out of this. If you were lucky enough to get one of these at new price, or maybe you've got a friend like I did who's willing to sell it to you at new price instead of marking it up, um, then 590 is what these cost new, I believe. The Arius, this is one of the most plain Jane versions that you can possibly get. Um, this one doesn't even have like the milled pattern on the scales. Some of them now have the milled texture on them. Um, some of them also get crazy materials on the show scale a lot of the time. There's a, a lot more you can do to this knife than what I have here. This one just has the, I forget what they call this blade finish, but it's got satin flats um, and then it's got, yeah, it's kind of a two-tone blade. Anyway, this knife I actually bought on the secondary as well, again from a friend, and I paid him, I think it was 600 bucks even for it. It might have been just a hair over 600. And I believe that's just what this cost new when he had purchased it. Now, I want to say the most recent drops I've been seeing, they might have gone up a little bit. They might be more like 640, 650, something like that. But that might also be the machined, like the, the milled surface titanium ones. Um, I don't know. Let's, to be safe, we'll call the area 650 because I'm not confident or positive that you can still get them for around 600 bucks. I know when I bought my Gen 3 Arius, I think it was just under 600. And I got one that was also pretty plain Jane like this. So this one's a little over 600. This one is just under 600. So let's call that the cost on each of these. Hopefully I'm close enough. Um, so that brings us to value, right? 
And I think when I do these comparisons, oftentimes fit and finish really does kind of feed into value. So when you look at them in terms of the materials they're made from, the materials list is virtually identical. Both of these are titanium frame locks, and both of them have M390 blades, which are hollow ground. Um, and both of them have extensive internal milling. Both of them uh, on the exterior are also contoured and chamfered. The, the, mill work on, the mill work on them is frankly pretty incredible. Um, they're both gorgeous, right? So you're playing with the same materials and about the same amount of them. So it's not like this one's an M390, but this one's in 154CM. Then it would be like, value is here. Yes. The, they're pretty much the same in terms of those things. So really, I think what it's going to come down to for me is the fit and finish. That Those little things that to me set the areas apart as feeling a little bit nicer, I think would be why I feel like the value is a little bit more. Like you, you get a little bit more for that amount of money you're spending on the areas. And also say, even if we are calling it, say this one is 650 if you're getting one on a drop, and this one is 590 if you got it on the drop, that's $60 worth of difference, which at that point, when you're spending that much money on a knife, $60 is nothing, but it's not that big of a difference. Like, at least the way that I look at it and the way I buy knives. If I'm looking at a knife that's $500, or a knife that's $650, it's really about which one I like more than it is about that $150 gap. Those are both expensive at that point. I guess to me, in my brain, is the way that I'm looking at it. Um, I'm totally fair if you don't look at it that way, but I see these as being pretty much the same in price. And so for this one, to me, feeling just a hair nicer, we're gonna go Arius on value. All right, so now we're only one point for the Evo 2.0 so far, um, but I think that's about to change. In fact, I'm sure it is. <laughs> so we're one point for the Evo on looks, and then action, ergos, fit and finish, and value all went to the areas. So next category is carry. This one's interesting. Let's start with the one that's not gonna win. Um, the areas. I love to carry the areas. It's a, a fantastic knife to carry. It really does carry quite well, I find. I find this pocket clip for me does all right. Um, I prefer loop over style deep carry clips. That would be my preference. There is no option for that on the Arius, not even on the aftermarket. There's nothing I can do to make this deep carry. So if you look at it, about that much of the knife sticks up out of your pocket, which is more than I would like to have sticking up. But at least if I'm having some knife stick out of my pocket when it's the Arius, um, it looks cool because it's the Arius. And so I hope someone notices that it's an Arius in my pocket so I can flex a little, right? Um, that said, the knife is light for its size and the materials it's made from. It's such extensive internal milling that this knife always surprises me how light it actually feels. It carries quite well. Everything is rounded. The flipper tab isn't huge. It feels nice in pocket. It's not too difficult to get in and out of pocket. I, I find this knife actually carries quite well for me. But... This one carries better. <laughs> um, in terms of how they feel in pocket, this one, I think the big difference is going to be just the way this clip ultimately feels and how kind of, it seems huge when it's on the knife. Honestly, like aesthetically, it looks like a lot of clip, but it's really comfortable to slide in and out of pocket. It has great retention. It's just a well done pocket clip. This knife also feels a little bit thinner. Maybe it's because it seems a little wider, so it just kind of like spreads out a little more, but I don't know. To me, this knife does feel a little more comfortable in pocket. I think it's also partially because it's shorter this way. That might help as well. It's not quite going so deep into the pocket. And uh, I mean, neither of them carry that deep. This one, you're also going to have a, a fair bit of knife sticking out of your pocket about that much, right? But I, I just prefer it. I find this one, to me, carries a little bit more comfortably. So not by a mile, but point for the Evo. All right. Now the last category is cutting. So if I put these blades where you can see them both, um, these are both featuring a hollow grind. The Evo is a little bit of like a worn cliffy type of thing. Uh, I guess that would be the way I'd describe it. It's a different for a worn cliff because it's got so much belly. I feel like a lot of worn cliffs don't. Uh, the Aries is gonna be more of like a kind of standard drop point, I guess you'd call it. Um, 
it almost seems a little bit like a trailing point when you really look at it. I don't know. We're going to call it a drop point. Um, let's talk Arius first. So the hollow grind on the Arius is very tall and it's very effective, I find. I really, really like this grind because it's nice and thin down behind the edge. It stays thin for a while before thickening up up here toward the flat. It looks great and it functions great. Um, the tip is very usable, very functional. You have some belly here that you can use for things you want to use belly for, and you have some flat down here. Um, it's an excellent cutter with one nitpick. The factory edge that they put on at Koenig is generally not my favorite factory edge. <laughs> and I've heard this from a number of other people as well. Um, this one, when I purchased, already had this mirrored edge on it. And I've stropped this knife once or twice now to kind of maintain the edge that's on it because I really like the edge that's on it. But this is an aftermarket edge. The, the first owner of this knife put this mirrored edge on here before selling it to me. So this is not the factory edge and I believe he reprofiled it. So this is a totally different degree per side than the factory edge. They put a really steep factory edge on it so the edge looks really tiny and it looks great. It looks fantastic, but it's just not performance wise my favorite edge to see put on a knife. That's just me. Not the worst, not terrible, but I would like them to do like, I don't know, maybe 17, 18 degrees per side. Um, it's more than that for factory. So in terms of like cutting with this knife, I love it, especially with this edge on it. If you're somebody who knows how to sharpen or has a buddy who knows how to sharpen, like great, just put a new edge on it and it'll help in my opinion. Um, but genuinely, I love carrying this knife. I love cutting with this knife. I use this knife a lot. Um, I've done quite a bit with it over the last year or so that I've owned this one and it's performed great. But here's where this one's going to come in. Um, this one, the Evo 2.0, I have to give it to this one. Uh, this edge is thinner down right behind the edge. It's also a really tall hollow. And not only is it gorgeous, but the performance of this hollow grind, I've just found it's done really, really well. Um, this factory edge is incredibly sharp, very, very sharp. And you've got a great, very usable tip that's placed down a little lower. I like that. I'm a fan of worn cliffs. I'm a fan of not having to rotate super far. Like when I want to cut into a package and cut into the tape, I need to get the tip down into it. And this one, I got to rotate all the way down here to get the tip in, right? On this one, even though it's got this belly, I only need to rotate to here and then boom. The tip is in it's just it's a, a great blade shape it's a phenomenal grind it looks great and it functions great so the cutting performance is going to go to the evo 2.0 so this ended up picking two points at the end there but it was a little too late <laughs> um, too little too late i should say so the winner if my math is correct yeah four points arius to three points evo 2.0 so only a one point victory for the Arius. And uh, I mean, you're also welcome to disagree with me. And if if you prefer the Evo, let me know. Like <laughs> I could comment down below whether you agree with the decision or not. Um, it, it's not gonna sway me after the fact. This is the way that I feel about these, but I'm curious because these knives are both, in my opinion, such heavy hitters. Um, I feel like they're both a good, a, a great, honestly, representation of the value you can get at this price point of knives that actually perform super well, are really fun, look really cool, like carry well. These are pinnacles in the five to $700 range, in my opinion. They're shining examples of knives that I love in this range and feel objectively nicer to me than knives that cost in, that, that are in brackets price-wise below them. These don't feel like things that you could even possibly get at $300 or $400. It feels like these are nice enough to justify their prices. Um, and I don't find that all knives in this price range do feel that way. So in the end, um, it's probably not a huge surprise, but the Arius is the winner. Um, <laughs> So take that for what it's worth, I suppose. But these are both excellent. I don't intend to get rid of either one anytime soon. 
I love them both. They're both top five knives in my personal collection, for sure. I will be doing a collection, uh, or a top ten of my collection update soon, because my collection has changed quite a bit since the last time that I did it. I've had some new knives come in that'll definitely be in there, which will knock some others out. I've probably, I think, even sold some that were in my top ten last time. Almost positive. So, that'll happen soon. But, between these two, uh, the winner for me is the Arius. Evo 2.0 was real close though. So I guess we're just going to call it good there. I think I've, I've said my piece on this one. So thanks for watching guys. We'll see you on the next one.